you so much You're for so coming. Welcome. It's my pleasure. And I was wondering uh, what you were in New York in uh, the early 70s, and what was it like? What was the texture of the city like? Uh, because this is something that Gordon Mata Clark responded to as well. And I'd love to hear about how you responded to the city and how it, it in turn influenced your own work. Well, I think that uh, one of the most wonderful things in the 60s and early 70s was there was a community of artists that were going beyond the boundaries of their art forms. So that was the excitement that there was a lot of experimentation to go beyond what your training was to something else. And then sometimes people went back to their original forms, but then they had the knowledge uh, after experimenting with other forms. So it was very rich. And then the, the downtown world, I mean the downtown environment, in New York in the early 70s was very, uh, what is now called Soho, uh, was very broken down and, and uh, you know, wasn't an area that a lot of people knew about. It was old buildings, old tenements, old uh, warehouses. And so that gritty, uh, textured feel was very inspiring to work with. I did a, an outdoor piece in, in 1971. It was uh, actually, it was a three-part work uh, the audience first came up into my loft. I was living on Great Jones Street at that time, and they were only there were only 100 people a night. And then I, I rented a bus. They were brought downtown to uh, the performance garage. We did a second part there, and then they were brought a block away to a parking lot. And, the, and that was on Saturdays and Sundays. They they went to the parking lot piece, so there were maybe a thousand people at that. And that parking lot was, um, you know, I think there were about 100 people in it. And I wanted a helicopter, but I, that's I, you know the vertical space. I didn't I didn't get that. But it was really using uh, masses of people in this parking lot. The police came in and out a lot. I mean, it was you know we never got a permit. Um, it was just um, putting these very magical images in juxtaposition to that reality of the of the city crumbling. So it, it was very inspiring. You know, I mean, I've always been very inspired by archaeology, this idea of layers and, and a place and all its memories. And so it was a perfect place to work at that time. Well, you yeah. mentioned a couple of pieces that you did yeah. that dealt with urban archaeology, yes. in a sense. Could you describe those pieces? Well, uh, one of them was Vessel, so that was, a, you know, and I had been doing a lot of um, site-specific work at that time in the late 60s, early 70s. I had just finished a very big piece at the Guggenheim Museum using the whole space. And I think I was the first person to do that. So that was also, I had about 150 people in it. And uh, it took place in three different configurations. First, the audience was down on the ground. It was called Juice. And the audience was down on the ground. And then the second part, they walked up the ramps and there were performers in all the alcoves. Then the audience was on the ramps and looking, and then we all ran down and they were looking down. So it was kind of an inside out structure. And I was very interested in architecture and time and then I was very interested in memory as being part of your experience. So what happened with that piece was uh, a month later, a second part was in another part of town. And you had the images uh, that were compressed. It was a smaller scale piece. So you had the images in your mind from the Guggenheim, but at the same time you were having a different form was in front of your eyes. But that, that memory influenced the way that you perceived what you were seeing in, in the present. So that was something that interested me a lot in those days. And, Vessel, the piece that I talked to you about down that was happened downtown, also had this thing of moving an audience through space in the city, and um, you know, and having the memory of what happened before. In a sense, it would transform your experience. Objects that were in the piece transformed, the scale transformed. You know, it was dealing with um, you know uh, time. It was dealing with time as a, as an element. And then the other piece that I did. Um, which was a number of years later, was in 1994 in Roosevelt Island, and it was called American Archaeology. And it was supposed to be the beginning of, of a series. I've never been able to do another one since, but um, that was took place all over Roosevelt Island. Again, we had like, uh, we did the first part on one end, got a bus and bus the audience to the other end of the island. And it was very much using these layers of sociological um, uh, phenomena as a, as the content of the piece, because Roosevelt Island originally was called Welfare Island, and it was and the history of the island was always that the outsiders were there, and I remember as a child going down the East Side Drive and being really frightened by the look of it, and I remember my, my mother telling me about it, 
but it was, you know, it was a hospital, it was where the people that had plague were put. That's right. You know, it had this kind of, there was a prison. It's like Tiber Island in Rome. Yeah, I mean, it had this, this was the, this is the, you know, this was the, where you put the outsiders. And, you know, some interesting people were in that prison, like Mae West was in prison there. I think Scott Joplin ended up out there. I mean, it was a pretty, it was pretty interesting. Um, it was the, a mental hospital was out there. Charles Dickens um, went there and talked about, you know, the hauntedness of that place. So in 1994, there were huge hospitals for people with AIDS there. And so we really worked with that. The, you know, they actually at the end became part of a procession, some of the patients from the hospital. And they're on the, on the end of the island that we, you know, we did part of it in the afternoon and then there was a dinner break and then we brought them to the other end of the island. And that was the old smallpox hospital. And we were actually weren't allowed in there because it was condemned, but we snuck, we snuck in some lights and we snuck in some speakers. And then we, I, with my group, I, we made tapes of people coughing and shuffling on stairs. And at a certain point in the middle of the piece, the, the hospital lit up from the inside and you heard these sounds of, of those souls that were in that hospital. So it's a sense to, uh, about sort of breaking and entering, that things that you didn't have set boundaries for yourselves right. because uh, the desire to connect with the soul and time and space of a particular location exactly. uh, overrode all the sort of rules and regulations, exactly. uh, which is not unlike Gordon Monty Clark, but he would do his bring his spirit and his spirit of trying to bring light into a building that had been abandoned. Exactly, because I think that a part of it, and you know, I wish I had known him, but my impulse is very much about our American sensibility because of this pioneer kind of spirit. I mean, that's a positive aspect of, Amer of the American spirit, which is this can do and we're going to go forward and you know, it's, it has that, not we don't carry the backpack of European history. But the other side of that, the, the negative side, is that it's a throwaway culture. So we don't have any kind of sense of our history, our roots, the layers of lives that have gone by. There's none of that cherishing of, um, you know, of what has happened and, and where we are. So I think that as artists, we can actually point that out in, you know, in, a, in a very poetic way.